Uh, yes. Hey, we are live. Welcome, everybody. Welcome. We are welcome to Carolina Retirements Planners. Happy half hour. What number is this? Is this like 45? 45. 45. Dang, we've been doing this a while, you know? Been Almost doing this full last year. June. What are we gonna what are we gonna do on our year anniversary? I don't do know. I have to come up with something pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Why don't you introduce us, Sam? All oh, right. Um, I'm Sam Shukavage, and with me is my father, David Shukavage, and we are uh, Carolina Retirement Planners. Right here and, in Wilmington, North Carolina, in case you're tuning in from afar. And um, and you are tuning in for our our weekly happy half hour that occurs every Thursday at 4.30. We, have, we, we could no longer have all the cool events we did with clients. And so we started this. And now every week, a lot of clients come, a lot of their guests come. And if you are here, if mm -hmm. you could uh, type your name into the chat so we know you're here. The only way we know you're here is if you type your name in the way it all works. We're actually doing this on Zoom and feeding it into Facebook uh, with Amy behind the scenes here doing it and and. Thank and goodness we're, for Amy. <laughs> so we're, we're navigating so, the, the technology. Yeah. Hey, Amy. There is Amy doing. And, and, and I can see that Bill and Ed have joined us, two of Ed our Renee. regulars. Hi, y'all. Welcome. Welcome. And, and, uh, Al. and uh, uh, yeah, it's been kind of fun. You know, we always like to talk about what day it is. Uh, what day is today? Amy, what day is today? You keep track of that stuff. Well, you know, I, we were talking about it's kind of trickery, but today is World Cocktail Day. And World. then you were like, didn't we just have this last week? But last week was National Beverage Day. Ah. So, you know, it's just all about, you know, having some cocktails and beverages and good old well, time. Arguably, every day is cocktail day, but you know we won't go there. We won't go <laughs> I like that. There. It's yeah. five o'clock somewhere. And and San, and what are what is everybody drinking today? Now that it's World Cocktail Day. Well, I wish I had known it was cocktail day because I would have because I would have mixed myself a cocktail. But when I went to my refrigerator, I found that I still had, it was uh, my anniversary or, or well, as an anniversary gift, my very good friend gave me a beautiful bottle of sparkling rosé and I still had some left over. So I, I poured myself some and it is really excellent. And what are you drinking, Amy? Anything profound there? Water. Just water. Just, okay. just some water. Sorry. Okay. Nothing exciting. Um, and I am drinking my normal herbal tea. I learned it's it's best not to drink too much when we're doing this. But I promise you, I probably are, I think we're going to go to Quanto Quanto Basso or something. It's a new Quanto Italian Basta. Quanto Basta on Second Street. Really good Italian food and great cocktails. And I was not going to have a Manhattan tonight, but now that I know that it's cocktail I, I'm, I have no choice i have no choice y'all y'all didn't invite us you didn't think to invite us to quanto nope. basta no nope. i guess not you know you gotta yeah. ask your mother you gotta ask your mother and let's see we also have james here and cindy hey, is here hey cindy. cindy hey cindy and, and teresa amy's mom hey amy's teresa mom is here I love when my mom is here. You know what? I could do like a little spoiler alert. So, David, are you going out tonight as like an early birthday celebration? <gasps> no, no. We don't, you know, I, you know, I keep birthdays quiet, you know. However, Amy and I apparently share the same birthday. So that's sort we of. Do. We really do. Yeah. And Kathy is tomorrow. So we all kind of like cluster around each other. Oh, really? I didn't. Oh, I didn't yeah. Keep track of these things. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So what is our topic today? What is our topic today? Uh, today we are talking about the, the how, when strategies behind uh, claiming your social security benefits. Ah, okay. And uh, you know, there's some, there's some really interesting. Really things. gripping excitement. And just a couple quick stories. Um, a, a few years ago, they they closed some of the social security loopholes. There used to be a bunch of loopholes. You could, you could um, file and suspend your social security 
and collect half your spouses and then you could they could you could both wait to 70 and turn it on there were all kinds of things in fact i often like to joke it was a was several years ago i don't know probably now eight nine time flies but i went to like kansas city to take a three-day social security course where we we spent like three days or two and a half days studying all the ins and outs of social security it was the longest two and a half days of my life you know and there were all kinds of stories now they closed a lot of the loopholes but there's still a lot of strategies you can use to maximize your social security and it's it's kind of one of those things if you you a lot of people have the potential to miss out on literally like tens or even hundreds of thousands of dollars by not making the most of their social security so we're going to go over some of that today and show you some of the things and the software and, and all that stuff and i go to the board behind me we're going to bring uh we're this is the story of of ricky and lucy and their social security situation another <laughs> real life fictitious couple you know uh, let's see who else has joined us since that happened we got patrick Lori is here uh, oh, oh apparently mom says that quanto basta is booked sorry dad oh darn that's, that's what you get for not inviting us i guess we'll go somewhere else we also have uh uh eric here uh paula's here hey, eric and paula and jeff yeah, Eric from Maryland is here, actually. And, uh, awesome. Well, moving to North Carolina, you know, all, soon to be welcome. Welcome. Yeah. <laughs> and, and Brent is here. I think yeah. we talked to them on the phone the other day. Brent is here. Uh, Becky Becky is finally here. Uh, and and uh, Paul. Hey, Paul. Haven't seen you in a while. Um, and he's drinking water. My sympathies. Uh, Paula, Paula is here. And uh, so, uh, just Paula gave us a nice tip. If uh, at Lowe's Foods, it's uh, uh, the Beer Den's Growler Half Price Day. Ah. So if you have a Lowe's Foods near you and you like to fill a growler of beer, you can get that for half price today. That is a great, great tip. Well, this one's oh. we better get we better get at it so we don't run okay. out of time. All right, all right. I'm gonna I'm gonna switch to the other camera okay okay you're gonna hide yourself oh i'm oh. sorry okay um how to how to maximize how to get the most out of social security um let's start with some basics uh what is the earliest you can take social security 62. Sam, 62. Any exceptions to that? Uh, if, mm -hmm. if your spouse dies and you're a widow, you could take it, or a widower, you could take it at 60. You can take it at 60. And there's a lot of strategies there. We probably won't have time today to talk about, but last week we talked about it when we talked about widows and widowers and the things that they face. So you can watch the rerun, go to Carolina Retirement Planners under events, and all 44 of the previous episodes are there to view on YouTube. You can click on the links. But 62 is the earliest most people can take. What's the latest? 70. Or, well, you could take it later than 70, but it would not make any sense. It wouldn't make any sense. It stops growing at 70. Although if you're taking it and working past 70, it'll continue to grow as you contribute more money. But it won't grow, but only because you contributed more money. In between is what's called full retirement age. And full retirement age is the age at which you get 100% of your, your social security. And that depends on, on what year you were born. I won't go into all the details, but it, it, for everybody, it falls between age 65 and age 67. If you go to your social security statement, it'll tell you what your full retirement age is. Now, if you take social security at 65 or at your full retirement age, you get 100. If you take it early, you get 70% of what your 100 would be for the rest of your life. 
And if you take it at 70, if you wait to 70, you get 132%. You get you know, 132% more than the full retirement age for the rest of your life. Now, it's pretty good, but you got to think about it. If I take it early, I get a lot less, but I get it for eight years, okay? Uh, and so I got to live so long to make that up. Any idea how long the average age would have to be? Uh, what is it, 80, 81, 80, 81? Yeah, it's around 80 to 81. So if you think you're going to live, you know, people are living a long time today. People, it, it, the break-even point, that's between 62 and 70. The break-even point is, uh, uh, is sooner than most people think. Now, if you are 62 and you are a bad health, you've had, you know, stents and you're worried about your life expectancy, you may certainly want to take it there. But if, if you're in pretty good health, you, you may want to wait. This is what it is for one person. If you're married, it gets really interesting because there's a whole other set of rules that apply. And that's where we come over here and we come to Ricky and Lucy. And, and they're a classic, you know, American couple. And Ricky was the primary breadwinner, you know? And, and, um, and, and he went out and worked every day uh, and, 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 and orchid orchestrated himself a good life, if you will. And, and he had, he had a, a, a full, he had a, a social security for Ricky. Now, Lucy, she didn't, she, you know, after they had babies or a baby, she stayed home took care of little Ricky, vacuumed the floor. You know, she worked some for a while. I think it was like in a chocolate factory, but, but, but she stayed home and, and took care of little, little Ricky for the most part. How much social security is she entitled to, Sam? Um, at least half of his. Yeah, a spouse, even if they didn't work at all, is entitled to half their spouse's uh, full retirement age social security at their full retirement age. Again, if they take it earlier, they'll get less. If they take it later, they actually don't get, I don't think they get more. So they're entitled to half, but see, it's more complicated than that. Cause Lucy did work for, a, you know, at a number of jobs or in the chocolate factory for, for 10 years. And so she actually is entitled to some social security of her own. So if you look at Lucy's social security, she's got her part and then she's got the part that comes from, from Ricky and she can't, she can start them both at different times and they grow at slightly different weight rates as, as, as you're waiting to start them. And for most people, you cannot start the part that belongs to your spouse until they've actually started theirs. That's one of the rule changes that occurred a few years ago. So she can't start this part till Ricky start his. Boy, it's getting, it's getting complicated. You know, all of a sudden we got two parts here and when should I start? Also, Sam, let me ask one other question. Uh-huh. If Ricky dies, what is Lucy uh, entitled to get for Social Security? The higher of the two Social Securities, which the in their case would be Ricky's. Would be Ricky's. And if Ricky takes it at full retirement age, she, she would get this amount. But, you know, if Ricky waited to 70 to take it, Lucy would get this higher amount. So yeah. if you're married and you wait to take your Social Security you're not only getting more money for your life, you're getting more money for your spouse's life too, if they outlive you. So there's yeah, often of times, yeah, oftentimes it makes sense for, for the higher, the higher social, you know, the higher earner to, to wait until mm -hmm. 70 if, if their assets can allow it. 
And if you start at this 100%, is it adjusted for inflation? Yeah. Yeah, there's a, a, a social security. Now, realistically, it may not go, they may not go up quite as fast as inflation, but it does go up some every year. Uh, most people who have a pension, unless you've got maybe a government pension, most pensions don't go up each year with inflation. Once you get it, it locks in. So there's another advantage to Social Security. But here it is. It's complicated. I've got, I've got all these different variables. How do, you, how do you figure out what's best for you? And when you got something complicated, it's best to use software. And there's a company called Social. There's a number of s software programs out there. The one, the one I like the best is by Social Security Solutions. And you can go to socialsecuritysolutions.com and they charge about $50. There's some free ones out there too, but this one gives you lots of reports. And you can use that to help you make the decision as to which one to start. Now, I... You know, I'd like to show you a real life example of how this and all this stuff works. The trouble is, you know, it's kind of hard for me to legally show somebody else's social security. But there is one I can show you, and that is my own and my wife's. See, uh, oh boy, I won't try to remember how many years ago it was, but, but you know, um, uh, a little over a third of a century I married this very tolerant and understanding woman named Sandy, you know, and, and so we've been married and she also worked part time. She worked for a while until, until uh, Sam was born. And then she, like Lucy State, we were able to have her take care of the kids and, and, uh, that, um, and, and Sandy is, is by chance four years older than me. See, I married a cougar. And, um, and, and I want to go show you what the results of this is by, on some actual thing. I'm going to go down here to the iPad, and we're going to look at that exactly. So um, OK. Let's see. It should. Uh, should come on, hang on here. Worked a little while ago. Hang on. It'll get here. Let me try try it again. Your camera view is also still the, the board. I know. I know. Oh. Stop sharing instantly. Stop sharing, please. Yes. There we go. Let's try it again. Click on the right thing. Darn, we rehearsed this earlier and it worked fine. I can vouch. I did see that it did work fine, but something is amiss here. So we're what I'm going what I'm hoping to show you is what the the social security solutions um, uh, example is for for us. And I, boy, you know I've done this. I, I've done there. We go. I've done this before, and now it works. Okay, just being difficult. Um, this is uh, this is David and 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 Sandy's example and. If you feed your information into this, and what you're usually feeding in is like your, your really all you need is your full retirement age and your and your your full social security amount and your age. It'll give you all these these all this information you can use. For instance, it'll it'll show you what your you would be if you live to a normal life expectancy. It'll tell you what it you'd be if you live to a long life expectancy. And um, 
it would, uh, we also have, uh, remember I talked about that crossover point, showing you what, how long you'd have to live to come out ahead. Here you can see where it is for us. It's about, it's about 81 years. So you've got different reports. If you are an engineer like me, there's all these really cool, bunches of cool reports. This is saying if, if one person lived this long and the other person lived this long, this is the area, the sweet spot or what the amount would be based upon your respective lives. But if we wanna to cut to the chase, the more important thing is a report that gives you different details uh, based upon whether you, you take it early, if you both take it at 62 or as soon as you can, if you both wait to full retirement age, if you both wait to 70. But the important one is the one they call primary. That is the amount you would get if you, uh, which, which strategy would bring you the most money in retirement. And I'm going to blow this up for us. I'm going to show you what this would look like for us but kind of enlarge it a little bit. And again, just like Ricky and Lucy, we have my social security here and, and Sandy's here. And just like Ricky and Lucy, Sandy has some of her own. And the strategy says that Sandy should begin her benefits based on her earnings record uh, on when she was 66 at, at April of 2018. And that means she would start her part, make a different color. She would start her part down here. Now, I would begin to take my social security, not at age 70, but at 69 and 10 months. And that's because this is assuming, this, this is assuming that you got to figure out how long you live. This says David will die at 85 and Sandy will die at 90. Now, Sandy's mother, grandmother lived till a couple day, a day, a few days shy of her 101 first birthday. So it's very likely she'll live that long and out and, 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 uh, but if I die at 85 and she dies at 90, it, we actually make a little bit more income if I start two months earlier instead of age 70. The software is that good. When I start mine, now Sandy can start hers. She can pick up that or she can pick up her part of mine. And so she jumps from 867 up to 1360. And then in, in 2041, when I crap out and die, she switches to my higher amount. She gets, she gets my social security. So you can see, um, you can see it, it can be a little complicated or the, the strategy you want to take may not be obvious. Now, here's the other thing with this software. You are able to go in and, and, and figure out different scenarios. You're able to go in and figure out different alternative scenarios based upon, you know, what happens if, what would happen if a typical example is uh, you have a couple and, and one has earned more and they wait to 70, but the other one starts at 62 instead of waiting to 66 or later. Well, it might only mean they lose $20,000 over 30 years. It makes a lot more sense to get the money early. You get a way to figure out what you're giving up and you're making your decision based upon numbers and not emotions or guesses. So, so this, this is, is using this software. By the way, if, if you are if you are on the call, mo pretty much all our clients where uh, we had a social, social security decision to make, we've run through this. If you're here as a guest and you'd like to say, hey, I'd, I don't, I'd like you to run it, we, we, we'd be happy to run it at no cost, no obligation. What you can do is, call, is go to the website, Carolina. 15.com 
That's www.carolina15.com. And you can get right on our schedule and book a 15 minute phone call. We can get your information and, and kind of email you one of these reports. Uh, or you can call our office at 910-815, do it the old fashioned way, 3100. Just say, hey, can I get a time to, to talk to David or Sam and, and, and look at my, my social security? So, so that is, uh, um, uh, did I cover everything, Sam? Can you think of anything I missed? I think you did, but I do. I saw two, two questions come up in the chat that I think we could address really quick. Um, Pat had a question. You know, one of the things that we talked about was, you know, oftentimes one of the, the spouses waiting until 70 to take their social security benefits. But if they were to pass before they were 70 and they hadn't taken their benefits yet, what would that mean for the spouse who was left? Um, with deceased spouses, it gets interesting. Let's say you had started yours, your spouse's was higher. And I, in general, you would be able to continue to collect yours and then start your spouses when they would have been 70. So uh, there, with, a, with a widower, widower, you have two choices. You can start theirs at 60, say you died early, and wait to 70 to start yours. Or you can start yours early and wait to seven. There would have been 70 to start theirs whichever one makes the most sense. The software is actually really good at, the, at figuring that out. So uh, I think the real lesson is you want to get some good advice. You want to run this on yourself to, to, to look at it. And the software will show you, I didn't show it here, but the software will show you how much more money you would get if you live to those ages. And sometimes it's a little bit and sometimes it's a lot. And that's what you need to figure out. And, and Lynn thinks she, she was looking at her parents' social security and she believes that her, her mom is not getting half of her dad's social security benefit. And in that case, would you recommend that she contact the social security administration? She should call and check it out. Now, remember, if she started her social security early, she mm -hmm. will not get half of his. She will get less than half of his. She has to wait till she's at full retirement age in order to be entitled to half of what he gets at his full retirement age. So it's complicated, but it wouldn't hurt to check. Mm -hmm. um, do you know if the, if the software deals with the windfall elimination provision, WEP? <coughs> um, I... I don't, I don't know. Um, and that, and that gets complicated. That's kind of where if you've, if you've been working for the government and your social security and your pension are combined for a lot of school teachers and I'll get it, they're mm -hmm. not able to collect the same way other people are. And I'm not sure that may require yet another, another look. Cause I don't think the software knows the software just know, knows your age and social security amount and boom. And that's all you need to know for most people. But if you've got that dual thing, that's, that becomes more complicated. All right. Okay. Well, I see it's 4.59. Okay. Wait, wait. I just want to oh, One last thing. One last yeah. thing. Yep. If, yep. Hey. If, oh, if, sorry. If, Thanks, tell you, if we have a, <coughs> we have a, a report, uh, when, what, when, who, and how the social security decision, if you'd like a copy of this, you can, you know, respond to this email, call us, uh, you know, and, and we'll send one of these out in the, by, in mail, a real copy made on paper, you know, so. All right. Awesome. Well, for those of you who might be joining us for the first time, if you are not familiar with what I have, uh, this is our weekly wine raffle. So each week we give away two bottles of wine and we have them shipped and delivered directly to your door. Uh, but we have them shipped to you directly from uh, Fermental Bottle Shop. They are a locally owned 
a family owned bottle shop located out in Ogden. And to enter this raffle each week, you have a numerous ways to enter. Uh, the easiest of which is you can, when you see the, the Facebook uh, event for each week, you can click that you are going. And when you say that you are going, we will automatically enter you into the drawing. If you share that Facebook entry, you know, the Facebook event with a friend, we will enter you in a second time. And if, uh, if you are on our email listserv and throughout that week, we'll, we'll let you know what our topic is ahead of time. If you respond to that email and you let us know uh, some questions you have about this topic, if you let us know some future topics you'd like us to cover, or you just say, enter us into the wine drawing, we'll get your name in here. If you uh, forward that email to friends so they can join us for our happy half hour, you've got to let us know because our technology is not that we are not that that far, you know, that advanced quite yet. You've got to let us know at that point, but we'll enter you in again at that point. Um, so basically, any way you can get your you want to get in here, we we will we'd love to give away one. This is one of our favorite things to do. I also, I just want to let you know, I, I'm not sure if you saw but what last week's winner is, is on this week with us as well. So Nancy is watching with us this week. So. Oh, hey, Nancy. Yeah. yeah. I don't think she received her wine yet. Um, it was a little, a little late for me getting in touch with her to find out what she liked, but I always like to see when, when we have people coming back and continue joining us. Okay. Ooh, almost knocked over my, my champagne flute. I, I get nervous drinking out. Of, I love drinking out of them, but I get nervous. I'm clumsy. You know, they make them out of plastic too. Yeah, good? but that's, you know. Humor, a little humor there. You know? I know, that's, that's, that's my, my beach or my like, you know. I, your I know dog. how I've compensated for my clumsiness over the years, you know. I know I do. I oftentimes will drink out of the, the you know. Okay, but the moment that everyone's waiting for. All right, all right, all right, all right. We got you. up to drink. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Yet, but you know. Okay, so our winner this week is Al G. Al G. Al A. First name Al. Last name starts with G. So okay. Al G. Al G. Great. Congratulations, G. Al G. Congrats, algae, not the kind that grows on top of a pond, but the, the lovely human being, I believe. <laughs> I know what you I mean. I know what you I mean. I saw him comment on, on, on our post today. You know, so that might be far more dangerous first, last initial, you know, combinations. We got to watch it, you know? <laughs> well, con congratulations, Al. You are our wine winner this week. Um, and for those of you who did not win, continue to enter. Um, I look forward. I look forward to hopefully drawing your name here in the near future. Al, Al has already commented on on Facebook. He's like, "That's me." It's <laughs> like, "Yes, Yay. that is you." Yay! So he is on with us today as well. So that's awesome. Really yes, we love that. Yes, Al, that is you. <laughs> well, good. Good. Well, with that, we will see you a week from today on next week's happy half hour and uh, cheers, everybody. Cheers. cheers.